In the Middle Ages, there were many strange traditions and rituals that can shock people from the 21st century. You definitely didn't learn about them in history class at school. In this video, you will learn about the most insane and bizarre medieval traditions. This is the Fudge Network, and in this episode, I will show you the most interesting and unusual medieval traditions that won't be told in history classes. Divorce in the Middle Ages was truly bloody. Many people think that divorce is a relatively recent practice, dating back only a couple of centuries. However, it was possible to get divorced in the Middle Ages. But process looked completely different back then. For example, in medieval Germany, there was a practice of trial by combat between spouses. Thus, a husband and wife could resolve disputed issues including divorce if it was initiated by only one party. Such combats took into account the difference in physical strength between a man and a woman, and therefore, rules were quite interesting. Husband was placed in a pit, dug in the ground with one hand tied behind the back, holding something like a sword or a sharpened stick in the other hand. Woman was armed with several stones wrapped in cloth. This weapon weighed several pounds. Man could not leave his pit, but woman could freely run around and strike blows. Everything ended rather harshly. If the loser did not die during the combat, he was executed. The famous words from the marriage vow, till death do us part, took on a new meaning in the Middle Ages. Animal Trials. Imagine this scene. Real court session in process, but instead of a human defendant, it's a pig. In the Middle Ages, this was a completely normal practice. Animals could be tried and sentenced to death. There are many historical documents that testify to this. For example, in 1457, a sensational trial took place in the town of Savigny in France. A pig and five piglets were presented before the court, accused of attacking a child which resulted in the child's death. The trial was conducted according to all the rules. In addition to the judges, the prosecutors, several witnesses, and the defense were present. As a result of the investigation, the judge handed down a guilty verdict for a pig and acquitted the piglets. The pig was sentenced to death. Such case may seem strange, but in medieval Europe, trials of animals were a common practice. Pigs, cows, goats, horses, and dogs, which were presumed to have violated the law, were usually subjected to the same legal proceedings as humans. But the most vicious violators, judging by the number of surviving documents, were pigs. They behaved quite wild and often attacked people. Nevertheless the law could be harsh not only towards animals, but also towards those who showed cruelty towards them. For example, medieval testimonies have survived about death sentences for people who treated animals cruelly. Women in the Middle Ages shaved their eyebrows, plucked their eyelashes, and removed hair from their foreheads. Today, women spend a lot of time and money caring for their hair, striving to emphasize its beauty. In the first half of the 15th century, the ideal of beauty was an oval face with a small nose and lips, and only the eyes remained the bright color accent on the face. A sad and emotionless face was considered beautiful. Some believe that the fashion for removing hair from face influenced the absence of eyebrows in Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. However, this is not the case. The artist began painting Mona Lisa in the early 16th century, when this fashion had already passed. In addition, experts have determined that the eyebrows in the painting of Mona Lisa were drawn that were erased during one of the restorations. Medieval shoes with very long toes and other strange fashion. You've probably seen this shoe design in movies about the Middle Ages. But in reality, this trend for long toes in the Middle Ages was even more insane and funny. Such shoe variety was particularly prevalent in Europe in the 15th century. These shoes were called poulains. The length of the poulain's toe varied. As a rule, the more noble the person, the longer their toe. Many tried to make the toe as long as possible to demonstrate their status. Only members of the nobility could afford to walk around in such uncomfortable shoes with elongated toes because working in poulains with a long toe was practically impossible. To keep the long toe in shape and prevent it from losing its form, they filled it with some soft material, such as wool. Otherwise, it would just drag on the ground, hinder walking, and ultimately look bad. The poulains themselves were mainly made of leather. Archaeologists have repeatedly found poulains during excavations. This was largely because fashion at the time did not change as quickly as it does today. A particular style could be in fashion for many years. So you could wear the same shoes for almost your entire life and still be the most stylish person around. This is not the only strange fashion trend associated with the Middle Ages. Another example was the so-called codpiece, a flap that men attached below the waist. 
The codpiece could be found on knightly armor as well as in everyday life. In armor, this attribute had more practical value, it protected important organs. However, in everyday clothing, the codpiece played an aesthetic role, emphasizing the masculinity of men. Since in those days many men wore tight-fitting stockings, the codpiece was very noticeable and it was essentially worn for this purpose. Some wore it under their clothes, while others attached it to their belt on the outside. The fashion for codpieces was widespread in the 15th-16th centuries. For example, in many portraits of the famous king of England Henry VIII, you can easily see this attribute. In medieval England, soccer was prohibited. England is considered the birthplace of soccer and one of the world leaders in this sport. However, in the Middle Ages, soccer was illegal in this country. And all because 700 years ago this game was much more violent, chaotic, and dangerous than it is today. Some players could die during a match. The game simply had no clear rules. An infinite number of players could participate in a match, and players were allowed to do practically anything to get the ball. As a result, in the early 14th century, the English king imposed a ban on soccer due to excessive brutality. Those who violated the king's decree were sent to prison. Just imagine how chaotic soccer looked back then, if even people in the Middle Ages considered it brutal. The first wedding night with witnesses and other strange wedding traditions. It's hardly a surprise to learn that medieval marriages, especially among the upper classes, were rarely based on love. Instead, they occurred for political and social gain. Women in those times had no say. In fact, Men and women were considered ready for marriage at the age of 13 to 14, which seems quite strange today. The actual ceremony of marriage in the Middle Ages was completely different. To begin with, couples did not need permission from a special government body to enter into marriage. They could do it just by expressing their consent. Therefore, marriages were contracted anywhere, on the street, in church, or at home. Therefore, today it is quite difficult to say that if certain couples from the Middle Ages were actually married. But perhaps the most interesting fact about medieval marriages is the tradition of the first wedding night. Among the upper classes, it was not a private event. In addition to the newlyweds, witnesses were present in the room during the first wedding night. This implied that the process of conception was taking place. Although some degree of privacy could be ensured by curtains on the bed, but this element of interior design was hardly ever present. The April Fool's Day was celebrated even in the Middle Ages. But at that time, the holiday was not on April 1st, but at the beginning of January. This tradition migrated to Christian Europe from paganism. The essence of the medieval festival of fools was as follows. Representatives of the nobility swapped places with the lower class. Servants played the role of masters for one day, and the nobility, in turn, became servants. During the celebration, everyone dressed up in different costumes, sang indecent songs, and drank until they lost consciousness. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting. Also, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to always be aware of new videos. And of course, leave your comments under this video.